If there's one thing I took away from playing Lost Belt 6, it's why bother getting an Artorio waifu when you can have a Morgan mommy. Hello everyone, Silveroni of Genia Reviews here, bringing you a spotlight for the servant who proves that Meta and Horny can both coexist, Morgan. We'll be examining her stats and skills, as well as going over pointers that handle her effectively and overall grade comparing her to how she stacks up to the other 5 star servants. So if you're ready to unleash the farming beast, then hit that like button, subscribe, and ring my bell so you can catch all of these spotlight videos as they go up, and you can help out the channel. And now, onto Morgan's stats. Morgan has a max HP of 12,440 and a max attack of 12,193, which becomes 13,412 due to her Berserker class modifier. Morgan's stats are fairly average as far as Berserkers go, with average HP and slightly above average attack for her class. Naturally, her attack still ranks among the highest in the game compared to the rest of the SSR servants, but she does have very low HP. When it comes to her command cards, Morgan has 4 hits on her quick card, 3 hits on her arts, 3 hits on her buster, and 5 hits on her extra card. She has an NP gain rate of 0.53% and a star rate of 5%. Both Morgan's star generating and NP gain are just about average, but that's saying a lot for a Berserker. Overall, Morgan has a very typical glass cannon stat spread associated with most Berserkers. Taking a look at her skills, Morgan's first skill is Charisma of Desire rank B. This skill increases the party's attack for 3 turns between 10 and 20%. It also charges her own NP gauge between 20 and 30% and reduces the defense of all enemies for 3 turns between 20 and 30%, all of these effects depending on level. Her second skill is Protection of the Lake rank C, which charges an ally's NP gauge between 10 and 20% and increases the party's NP gain rate for 3 turns between 15 and 25%, both of these effects depending on level. And finally, for Morgan's last skill, she has Beyond the Furthest End rank A. This skill grants her one instance of Guts lasting for 3 turns and reviving her of between 1000 and 3000 HP. It also increases her Crit Star Absorption rate for 3 turns between 3,000 and 5,000 percent, her crit damage between 20 and 30 percent, and generates between 5 and 15 crit star. In addition, it also grants Morgan a special buff for three turns to make enemies lose between 10 and 20 percent attack and 10 and 20 percent crit chance. All of these effects depending on level. As for her passives, Morgan has Madness Enhancement rank B, which increases her Buster Card effectiveness by 8 percent, Magic Resistance A, which increases her debuff resist by 20 percent, Item Construction EX, which increases her debuff success rate by 12 percent, Territory Creation rank B, which increases her arts card effectiveness by 8%, and Fey Eyes rank A, which increases her own critical attack chance resistance by 20%. Moving on to her deck and Noble Phantasm, Morgan has a Buster Arts deck with Quick Arts Arts Buster Buster and a Buster Noble Phantasm. Her Noble Phantasm is Roadless Camelot. It's an AoE Buster attack that deals damage to all enemies with a damage modifier between 300 and 500%, depending on level. It also deals 50% increased damage against Round Table Knight enemies enemies and Fey enemies, it inflicts curse on all enemies for 5 turns, dealing 1000 damage, and it increases the party's overcharge by 1 stage for 3 turns. In addition, depending on the overcharge, it'll also increase damage against man attribute enemies between 150 and 200%. Morgan has surprisingly lenient ascension mat requirements. For level ascension, she just needs 8 forbidden pages, 10 homunculus babies, 6 scarabs, and 5 eggs. Pages drop at Shinjuku to Chome in Shinjuku with a 35% drop rate, homunculus babies have a 46% drop rate at the Waitley Residence in Salem, Scarabs are best farmed at the Deimos Islands in Atlantis where they have a 13% drop rate, and Eggs have a 13% drop rate at the Inari Shrine in Heian Kyo. Unfortunately, Morgan's skill mat requirements aren't quite as easy. She's going to need 15 homunculus babies, 15 pages, 15 fruit of longevity, and 24 scales of fantasy per skill. Fruits are farmable at the West Intercellar City in Olympus with a 22% drop rate, and Scales, which will quickly become the new bane of your farming existence will eventually be farmable at Londinium in Lost Belt 6, where they have a 45% drop rate. Simps rejoice, our queen is nearly here. I for one cannot wait to throw away all the quartz I've been saving since New Year's at Morgan's Banner. But for those of you who need more than just a delicious pair of thighs and some S-tier Zetai Ryoiki to make your gacha rolling decisions, allow me to convince you why Morgan is worth it from a gameplay perspective as well. I don't think it's any secret at this point, but Morgan is one of the best farming servants in all of FGO, and arguably the 
best Berserker in the game. Although you couldn't exactly tell that from her stats, because they're about as average as average can be for a Berserker. However, she does stand out in one statistical category, and that's her passives. Morgan has a wealth of powerful passives, both territory creation and madness enhancement buff most of her deck, and she also has a unique 20% resistance to crit chance. This means that enemies are far less likely to crit her unless they have significant crit buffs. And that's a strong passive to have on the Berserker, considering that one or two stray crits is often all it takes to kill one. But her passives are just the tip of the iceberg. What makes Morgan the monster that she is are her skills. Her first skill, Charisma of Desire, is a very strong version of Charisma that not only generates- Her first skill, Charisma of Desire, is a very strong version of Charisma that not only grants the party 20% attack up, but also charges her NP gauge by 30% and reduces defense for all enemies by 30%. Naturally, the NP charge makes the skill excellent for farming, but even beyond that, this skill is a powerful DPS tool for both Morgan and the team. Between the attack up and defense down, Morgan is effectively giving the entire team a 50% damage boost for 3 turns. In other words, a situational 3 turn mana burst, which is incredibly powerful for racking up damage. And because of her item construction EX, that defense debuff has a higher chance to land than most debuffs, which makes the skill pretty consistent. On top of that though, Morgan boasts another NP charge in her second skill, Protection of the Wake. This is a targetable 20% NP charge that also increases NP gain rate, although you'll almost always just target Morgan herself with the skill. Why? Because along with Charisma, it gives a combined 50% NP battery, which is the ideal amount for easy buster looping in Vich and Oberon teams. Much like Ishtar and Ibuki, having access to so much NP charge along with an AoE buster Noble Phantasm makes Morgan one of the most consistent and easy to use farmers in the game. But even after all of that, Morgan still has one last skill, Beyond the Furthest End. This one grants Morgan guts as well as a slew of crit buffs and also debuffs the enemy's attack and crit chance. This skill does a lot and can single-handedly make Morgan incredibly viable for challenge quests as a crit DPS. Not only does it provide decent survivability with guts, but it's an all-in-one crit skill that gives Morgan everything she needs to unload a ton of burst damage at will. It gives her crit stars, star absorb, and crit damage. Anytime Morgan has a buster card in hand, you can just press this skill and get a guaranteed burst of damage. Even the debuffs are quite strong. The crit chance down stacks with her passive to almost completely nullify the chance of any enemy landing a crit on Morgan. All of Morgan's skills are strong, but you should level Charisma first since that's both her biggest damage steroid and NP battery, followed by her NP charge, and then Guts last. You can also pick up mana loading followed by extra attack damage for Morgan's append skills. Morgan's bread and butter is of course her Noble Phantasm. It's an AoE buster attack that deals additional damage against Fey enemies and Knights of the Round Table. It also curses enemies, increases the party's overcharge, and increases damage against man attribute enemies. Don't let the abundance of effects confuse you though, most of them are niche. There are very few Knights of the Round Table and Fey enemies, curse is irrelevant, and while increasing overcharge is nice, it matters more for challenge quests than farming. What really matters is just that anti-man modifier. There are a metric ton of servants who have the man attribute. Keep in mind that man in this case doesn't mean male. For the most part, it refers to servants who are or were human, which in case you haven't noticed, is most of them. Between this big damage boost, her 50% NP charge, and her class, which gives her a pseudo class advantage over every enemy in the game, it's no surprise that Morgan is almost unmatched when it comes to her utility as a farmer. In Vich and Oberon team comps, Morgan is top tier when it comes to completing just about any endgame farming node. And as a buster servant, she doesn't need to rely on NP refund the way that servants like Summer Musashi do. So she's even capable of farming those 90 plus plus nodes that have one or two enemies per wave. Outside of being an elite farmer though, Morgan also has a ton of viability for challenge content. While her crits aren't Arjuna ultra levels of strong, her utility more than makes up for it. She can deal high levels of damage while also buffing the team massively with her charisma, slowing enemies down with her attack and crit debuffs, and even empower other supports by increasing their overcharge, which is an absolute game changer for supports like Merlin and Castoria. Not to mention that her deck structure and non-card specific skills allow her to be used with a wide variety of supports from both arts and buster comps. So she trades raw damage output for incredible flexibility. Just about the only area of weakness on Morgan comes from her skill cooldowns, which can be somewhat long, if only buster and art servants had access to multiple cooldown reducing supports.
And on that sarcastic note, there are a load of servants that pair perfectly well with Morgan for both farming and boss fights. For farming, NP charging servants like Vich and Oberon of course enable her to be the elite wave clearer that she is. But it's also worth mentioning that both Rhaenys and Chen Gong are excellent supports too. Rhaenys not only gives Morgan a huge NP battery, but also unmatched survivability in challenge quests by removing her class disadvantage and giving her hard defensive skills. Meanwhile, Chen Gong is a great free to play option to help with both wave clearing as well as granting some strong buffs. Remember that since Morgan is a berserker, she can take full advantage of Gong's amazing buster and crit buffs which synergize with her third skill. Morgan's bond CE is at the furthest ends. It increases the party's damage against fey and man attribute enemy. Like I said, there aren't that many fey enemies in the game and the lack of attack stats doesn't make the CE worth using. Instead, use craft essences that give starting NP charge to assist Morgan with farming like K-Scope or Aerial Drive. Or you can give her CEs that can dramatically boost her NP damage like Black Grail and Limited Zero. In the future, Cranking can be a good CE to pick up if you don't already have Aerial Drive since it's also a free CE that gives 50% starting NP charge and buffs Buster Card damage. As for command codes, any damage boosting code is going to work well on Morgan, but if you really want to try something different, I recommend Pigeon Report on her. It removes any crit damage buffs that the enemy has and gives them a 10% crit chance down debuff, so it synergizes really well with Morgan's anti crit skills and passives. Overall, Morgan in my opinion is the face of buster farming. She's the cream of the crop and the elite of the elite when it comes to farming endgame content due to her large NP battery, significant damage buffs, and her excellent class, which makes farming 99% of nodes a cakewalk for her. Unlike most of the current meta arts farmers, she doesn't need to rely on NP refund to loop, which means that she's much more consistent and capable of farming those odd numbered waves. And even outside of pure farming, she's still up there with Arjuna Alter in terms of being one of the best berserkers in the game for challenge quests, thanks to her high DPS and excellent utility. She does have some longer than average cooldowns and she won't put out the same level of raw damage that Arjuna or Kentoki can, but those are minor issues that are easily compensated for. So Morgan gets an S from me. I consider her to be the best berserker in the game and until we get the likes of Arquaid and Summer Ibuki, Morgan is easily up there with Spishtar as one of the best two farmers in the game. So whether you're a new player, a free to play player or a vet, Morgan has incredible value and will be top tier for years to come. And those are my thoughts on Morgan. But before you blow your load rolling, one caveat that I do want to mention with this video is that Morgan has an insane amount of rate ups, so it isn't really necessary to roll for her right at release. I would suggest that you save for Vitra Oberon instead, and just roll for Morgan later on this year during one of her other rate ups. But to you Morgan maniacs out there who are going to roll anyway, Good luck, especially you Morag, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over on our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter, all linked in the description down below. And I'll see you all in the next Servant Spotlight. So Brony out, later.